Given any two random variables, x and y, the variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y plus 2 times the covariance of x and y. You can prove this by just using the formula for variance. So, well, the formula for variance and covariance, I guess. Uh, the variance of x plus y is equal to the expected value of x plus y squared minus the quantity expected value of x plus y squared. So to evaluate this, we're going to first square the inside of the first expected value. This gets us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then we're going to use linearity on the second expected value. So e of x plus y is e of x plus e of y. And then we're going to use linearity of the first expected value. So e of x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is e of x squared plus 2 e of xy plus e of y squared. And we're going to square the second one. So e of x plus e of y squared is e of x squared plus 2 e of x e of y plus e of y squared. And I'm saying plus, but there's a minus sign out here, so everything becomes minus. Then we can rearrange the terms. So we have an e of x squared here and here, uh, and then a minus e of x squared. So we're just going to move that to the second spot. And those two combined, e of x squared minus e of x squared is this variance. Then we could also take the e of y squared and the minus e of y squared and put those next. And since they're next to each other, you can see that those combine to give us the variance of y. And finally, we'll take the 2 e of xy and the 2 e of x e of y. And we write this as 2. We're going to put the two, pull the 2's out. And we have e of xy minus e of x e of y, which is 2 times the covariance of x and y. So this was all done just by rearranging the formula uh, for the variance of x plus y. And here we do use the formula for covariance. It follows that if x and y are independent, then the variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y, because the covariance of x and y is going to be 0 when x and y are independent. This can be extended to more than two random variables. So if x1, x2 to xn are all random variables, then the variance of the sum of the variables is the sum of the variances plus 2 times the sum of the pairwise covariances. So I wrote this as 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1, and then the sum from j equals i plus 1 to n of the covariance of xi, xj. But it means 2 times uh, the sum over all the pairs of possible numbers. So you'd have like x1, x2, and x1, x3 and x2, x3, and so on. So you sum over all possible pairs. So this proof can be done by induction. And above, we showed the case for two variables. So suppose it's true for x1 to xn minus 1. That is, if you add n minus 1 random variables, the formula is true. Then the variance of x1 through xn, we can treat as two different random variables. First is uh, x1 through xn minus 1, and then the second random variable is xn. So by the property for two random variables, this is the variance of x1 to xn minus 1 plus the variance of xn plus 2 times the covariance of xn, the sum of xn to xn minus 1 with xn. And this is the variance of the sum from x1 to xn minus 1 plus the variance of xn plus, and then by definition of covariance, it's already um, you can sum over one of the coordinates. So this is uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of the covariance of the xi with xn. So we do x1 with xn plus x2 with xn up to xn minus 1 with xn. Now by the inductive hypothesis, the variance of x1, the sum of x1 to xn minus 1 is the sum of the variances plus 2 times the sum of the pairwise covariances. And now it's just a matter of combining the terms. So if we have the sum of 1 to n minus 1 of the variances of xi, and then up here we also have the variance of xn, if we combine all that together, we get the sum of the variances. Oh, and I left off variances here, so this is wrong. That's equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of the variances of the xi, not just the xi themselves. And if we take the sum of all the pairwise covariances up to n minus 1, that would be here, 
I'd also add in all the pairs of the numbers up with n, then that gives us all the pairs, pairwise covariances of the numbers from 1 to n. And so that does give the result. And as a corollary, if x1 to xn are independent random variables, then the variance of x1 through xn of that sum is equal to the sum of the variances, so variance of x1 plus variance of x2, and so on down to xn. So let's look at an example. Let x be a random variable with variance 3, and y be a random variable with variance 5. If x, has vari if x plus y has variance 2, what is the covariance of x and y? Well, this is saying that variance of x equals 3, variance y equals 5, variance of x plus y equals 2. And by definition, or by the result that we showed above, uh, the variance of x plus y equals variance of x plus variance of y plus 2 covariance of x and y. And we can plug in for everything except for the covariance. So this is 2, which is the variance of x plus y, uh, equals 3, the variance of x, plus 5, the variance of y, plus 2 covariance of xy that we were trying to solve for. And then it's just algebra from that point. So this would be 3 plus 5 is 8, 2 minus 8 is um, oh, we're going to get negative 6, sorry, uh, arithmetic in my head was a little wrong. Then divide by 2, so we get negative 3, and therefore the covariance of x and y is negative 3.